welcome to Corporate Governance at LSE. My name is Tom Kirchmeier and today we actually talk about something slightly different than governance in the private sector. We talk about governance in the public sector and for that I have with me here Steve Otter who is the HMI for England and Wales. Hello. Welcome Steve, thanks for coming in. Thank you. What does HMI actually stand for? HMI is Her Majesty's Inspector of Constabulary yeah. and I'm appointed by the Queen to inspect the police forces of England and Wales. Uh, we were established in 1856. Um, the system in Britain is that the police service is separate from the government um, and therefore it was felt necessary to have a, uh, a body that um, on behalf of the public would check that the police were doing the things in the right way, the right things in the right way. So in a way, very established system is almost like the capitalist system established about the same time in, in Manchester or even before that, you know, we are struggling to see that the system really works. Does it deliver mm. for, for us, in our case, shareholder, in your case, the public? Does it deliver? Well, it's clearly a modern system, as you yeah. say, um, for a modern period. And perhaps there is some questions now about how um, people might expect their police uh, to be checked, um, to be inspected. We inspect the police. We're not a regulator. We don't have powers our power comes through our voice. So we check what the police are doing, go in and ask the questions that we think the citizens would want to ask, um, and then write that down and publish it. And we publish it, not the government. We're independent of the government. I'm not employed by anybody. I'm appointed. So there's some real power in that. There is something about the way in which the public now access information is very different. So smaller chunks, um, bite-sized, if you like, snackable sort of information. And our reports have to be thorough, evidence-based, and, and often long. So we're very conscious that people are not reading them in the same way that they're used to. So we are thinking of different ways in which we can provide that information. But, but even then, it's really important that someone's asking the questions and checking. And the very function of having a body that has the power to go into a police station take data, ask questions, and then tell the public what they find is really important, we think, in a democratic society. Does it make a difference? Probably, we, yes. Well, we think it does, but mm. uh, it's really difficult to... Uh, there's never been any works, any study about how effective we are. Interestingly, we check how effective and efficient the police are. Um, but we'd point to the states where the problems around uh, shootings, uh, police shootings of black, black young men in particular, the raising tensions, there is nothing in America that is able to give the citizen a view into the life of their local police. Um, the federal system and the local, neither the federal system or the local police have any way in which that can be checked in practice. And we think what we bring that's unique and special, because there isn't a system in, in Europe that's like this either, is that we check what's going on in practice. We don't, it's not a theoretical check. It's not just to look at the data. It's not a performance. We're not performance managing these organisations. We're looking at what cops are doing in practice. And that's really important. When you were talking, a parallel came up, which is the stewardship code, which we have in, in the governance of public firms. Mm -hmm where we have that the owner is actually not really engaged, which are these pension funds all have a small stake. And so they don't really take it so serious, their yeah. role. And a parallel is obviously a normal citizen. You know, he has one vote out of 50 million, 40 million votes. Can he make a difference? So how do you engage with the public? Yeah. Well, we have to ask the public through yeah. surveys, but this is a really difficult question. Uh, well, the answer is difficult. Good. It's an easy question, difficult answer. Um, the surveys that we've done uh, over the last five years po point to quite an interesting belief amongst the public, that, that those who answer surveys, um, which isn't really our young people. So I have to say, this is probably an adult view of the world that actually they are reassured. They want, they don't trust the politicians. That comes across. Um, police and crime commissioners uh, were created quite recently. They're slightly anxious about 
how well they, a police and crime commissioner will achieve the goal of holding to account the chief constable. Because the chief constable, certainly in this, this country, because of their independence, is an incredibly powerful individual. They run their force independently of the state. So um, they were really worried about that. So what they were looking for was another layer of assurance. And they believed that HMIC could bring that. But we haven't tested whether we've been truly effective. Um, I think all we can point to are the changes that have been made as a result of what we say. And um, what's really interesting is that public servants, and I think it's probably the same in banks and others, once you tell the public what a particular area of business is doing um, and make it very revealing, that's probably a much better way of changing behaviours than uh, regulating. Mm. And we actually follow, follow the same rules in, in this country. Mm. So one big topic that interests us in this series is short-termism. We don't have enough technological change. Is there enough in, in the police service? We don't think there is enough in the police service. We don't think the service um, has fully grasped the potential that technology can provide to them, particularly as demands increasing, resources are reducing. Uh, that's partly the fragmented nature of policing in this country, 43 separate forces in England and Wales, uh, one for Scotland, um, sort of mitigates, uh, or militates, sorry, against them working together, although we are pushing very hard for them to do that. Uh, there is a real problem, and has been a problem, in the way the inspectorate and also police forces themselves have sought to understand how well they're doing. And that problem has been that they've looked at the data, and they've looked at the data as it re relates to a particular point in time, rather than looking longer term at some of the benefits that policing brings. And one of those is a feeling of security. Um, a sense of confidence in your community. And um, some of the biggest, I think, most important changes that we've seen are police forces and ourselves embracing the ideas around um, procedural justice, um, justice that comes through the establishment of structures and processes that actually build sense of confidence and cooperation in communities that is much bigger than the immediate uh, aftermath, for example, of a crime happening or the prevention of a particular crime. What, what we're seeking to encourage are forces to focus on the anticipatory action that they can take. And only if they work with their communities, and this procedural justice idea comes with an idea that um, if the police act fairly, if they engage their communities and are seen to be fair in the decisions that they make in the day-to-day in, in -day world, they have to look competent as well actually they build a sense of trust and that's been a really important part of policing in this country it goes back to I mean, the, the failure of the police bill in in the um, 19th century it failed twice because they didn't want a Napoleonic style of policing a European style mm -hmm. European style is very much one of control and only the Ben it was Jeremy Bentham who intervened and actually it was a really sort of uh, encouraged there to be a utilitarian approach. And the utilitarian approach adopted prevention as the primary purpose of policing, not detection. Steve, we are out of time, but one last question. Where do you see the journey going? Well, I think the policing needs to grasp technology and it needs to get better as analytical capability. These two things are at the heart of improving their preventive activity so that they can anticipate crimes happening, they can put their resources and build the right capabilities, sorry, and put their capabilities in the right place. Thanks, Steve, for coming in. Thank you. And thank you for watching.